Hi everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm a postdoctoral welfare researcher here at the Chicago Zoological Society. Most of what I do here is study dolphins. So I study the welfare of whales and dolphins that live in zoos and aquariums and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about our dolphins and some of the ways that we study welfare and some of our ongoing research projects. One of the first questions that I often get when I tell people what I do is asking what welfare actually means. And welfare is a term that we use to describe the collective mental and physical health of our animals. At Brookfield Zoo, we continuously monitor our dolphins' welfare in several ways, and I'll be talking about a few of them today. One of the ways that we study our dolphins is through something called a biologging device. You can see some of the dolphins that are swimming around our habitat right now are wearing them. Oh, there she goes right by. It kind of looks like an elongated hockey puck that they wear on their back. And this biologging device is called an M-tag. And the tags record data about the dolphin's movement, how fast they're swimming, and their depth in the habitat. So the dolphins can wear these devices, and then we can download them when we take them off and download all that good information, and we can study uh, how the dolphins uh, are using their habitat throughout the day, as well as their activity levels. So next, we're actually going to head up topside to the top of the hab dolphin's habitat to take a closer look. And on the way up, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about some of the research projects that we have going on. Uh, as you can see, we're making our way through underwater viewing right now, which is open. So if you guys come for a visit at the zoo, we have limited capacity, but you can make sure to come and visit the dolphins. So. I was, you guys just saw the dolphins wearing the M tags, and there we go. Uh, so the dolphins were wearing the M tags, and we've actually already used those in a research study that was looking at the welfare of whales and dolphins in zoos and aquariums. So the study that we did was called the Cetacean Welfare Study, and it was a collaboration and 42 other dolphin or zoos and aquariums around the world with whales and dolphins, and so we were looking at common bottlenose dolphins, Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins, beluga whales, as well as Pacific white-sided dolphins. Uh, and so for that study, we took the data from those MCATs, and we also had data uh, that was from recordings, video, record video recordings of dolphins, um, and we took all that data and we were looking at several things. So. The goal of the cetacean welfare study had two different parts. One of those parts was looking at how environmental enrichment, animal training programs, and habitat characteristics was related to the dolphins' welfare. And so this happened in two different uh, rounds of data collection. Um, in 2018 and 2019. And so we've been working on that data. And then now we're gonna go ahead in and we're gonna take a closer look at how those M tags worked. So welcome into the Dolphin Stadium here at Seven Seas. And we are gonna hop right up here on the main island. So you're going to get a look of what it looks like from the stadium side, from the stage side. All right. So we are going to head over and get a closer look with Spree. All right. So you can see we've got all of our dolphins are wearing the tags. The tags are attached with four suction cups that were specifically designed for dolphin skin and the tags are completely removable. And most of the components that I was telling you about earlier that where we can, where we can measure the uh, movements of the dolphin and their activity levels are internal. But one thing that we can measure and you can see on the outside is the dolphin speed. So when she pops back up, you may see that little a black dot right there on top. 
and there's a small impeller right there that spins as the dolphin moves through the water. And as that spins, we can record that data and we can know exactly how fast and how far the dolphins swim throughout the day. These tags were developed in collaboration uh, with researchers at the University of Michigan. And we've also worked with them to install cameras above the main dolphin habitat. And with these cameras, we get a great top-down view of what the habitat looks like. Oh, looks like she's gonna come up and give us a closer look, maybe. <laughs> Not today. Um, so with these cameras, we get a great top-down view. And this is one of the ways that we made the tags really, really accurate. So we could take the video data and we could track everywhere the dolphins were swimming in the main habitat and then combine that with the data that was being read by the M tags. And from that, we could combine them and make a very, very accurate reading of what uh, of how the dolphins are swimming and how much energy they were expending. So there's another up close look at what that tag looks like. You can see it right there. Um, so this was basically what part of what we did for the first part of the study to be able to study dolphin welfare. For the second part of the study, we created uh, healthy reference intervals for blood and hormone values for all four species that we were looking at. Again, that was common bottlenose dolphins, Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins, beluga whales, and Pacific white-sided dolphins. Um, and to do this, we got blood and fecal samples from our dolphins. And so to do this, we used a voluntary behavior which I think they might be able to show us here in a minute. Um, and we used, we tested all of these samples that we got, all of these blood and fecal samples for a variety of different things uh, that veterinarians would typically use for determining if an animal is healthy. We are gonna head right down here and they're gonna show us that food present behavior. So to collect a blood sample from a dolphin, they'll rest their flukes right here on the animal care specialist's knees. And then they have a vein that runs along their flukes where they're allowed to, where they have a vein. And so we clean that. And then you would be able to collect a nice blood sample. And she did a great job showing that behavior. Excellent, and so from those blood samples, we tested them all, and we were able to take those variables that we got, and we were able to make healthy reference intervals to determine what was a healthy range for bottlenose dolphins, and the other three species as well. And to make sure that these reference intervals were easy to use, we created an app called ZooPhysioTrack that veterinarians can download, and they can input the age and the sex of a dolphin as well as the time of year that that sample was taken and the app will give them reference intervals of what would be healthy values for that specific animal. But this isn't the only uh, app that we've created. We have another app that's called Zoomorph Track and you're getting a sneak peek of this behavior right here. So what Zoomorph Track does is one of the things is it allows animal care specialists to use length and girth like they just got on spree right there to estimate the dolphin's body mass. So for that, the dolphin will do what's called a layout, as you just saw Spree do, and then they can wrap a measure, measuring tape around the animal, and they can also get a length on the animal in a similar way. So you can see right there, they'll take that measuring tape, and she lays belly up near the animal care specialist, and they can get start that measuring tape from the tip of her rostrum or her mouth and then go all the way to her flukes and we can get a length on that animal. And so the app will do two things. First, the app will allow the animal care specialist to input that information into the app uh, and the app will generate an estimated body weight for that animal. The other thing the app will do will have uh, a healthy reference 
weight range that that animal could be in. And those are based off of wild dolphins. So Spree just did an excellent job of modeling a behavior that we call the layout. Oh, and here we go. And this is an example of how you would get a weight on a scale. Um, so we just had excellent uh, behaviors of showing how we would collect that length measurement and that girth measurement, and then how we could collect a weight using an actual scale. So next up, uh, we're gonna tell you a little bit about one of our upcoming research projects. So in a recent study by the Sarasota Dolphin uh, Research Program, they found that more than 70% of dolphins had a chemical called phthalates in their urine and phthalates are a chemical that is commonly used in plastics to make them flexible and they can get into the environment. So this summer we'll be collecting urine samples from our dolphins and this is a practice example of how it's done. So again, the dolphin will just go into this layout behavior and they'll turn all the way so their stomach is up. And then we can clean the area to get rid of any salt water. So we make sure we have a, a solid sample and then we can get a urine sample from this animal and we'll be able to uh, test that sample as to whether or not uh, they have fat phthalates in their urine. We usually only ask for this behavior in the afternoon, and so this is a, a practice run, so to speak, for her, um, just to get her used to behavior. And there we go. So if we asked for it in the afternoon, we would have had our urine sample, and then we would have been able to test that. And she's very excited about it. saying hello to everyone. Yes. So we hope that you are as excited as we are to see the results of the study. Um, and we hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about some of the uh, welfare research that we're currently working on with our dolphins. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch an episode of Bringing the Zoo to you today.